Great, we are live. Let me just double check. That's coming through here. Live in the six figure house flipper group. And we are awesome. Very cool guys. So today, uh, let me fix this camera here. Today we are doing what's called a Q&A session, question and answer. Um, so any questions you have about fixing and flipping, uh, real estate, getting deals, getting money, go ahead and drop it below in the comments. I'm going to answer those. I have some like a pre pre questions here. And then as you guys put questions um, down, that's that's totally fine. I'll answer those two afterwards. Um, that in mind. So a quick, quick background on me while we're you know, getting started here. Uh, again, my name is Victor. I'm a fix and flipper primarily in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, last year did about 20 flips, fix and flips. This year did about 30 is the goal. Uh, currently on track for that, so that's exciting. Uh, but yeah, just you know, getting started flipping and all that good stuff. So yeah, and then here we are. So that's it. So um, what do I want to cover here? So want to cover questions and answers. Um, yeah, so let's get into it. Someone was asking me recently, they're asking me, Oh, so if, if you're attending this and you don't have any questions, if you have questions, go ahead and drop those. I'll answer those. Uh, if you don't have any questions, that's totally fine. If you're on the live and watch this live, comment hashtag live. If you're on the replay and watch this after the recorded version, comment hashtag replay. And what that does, it helps like build engagement and um, helps like share the message um, just with how Facebook work and the algorithm works, the more comments I get and more comments we get, the more people can see this, the more people can benefit from this. Um, so that's, that's key here. So, um, yeah, comment hashtag live if you are on the live and hashtag replay if you're watching the replay here. So yeah, feel free to drop a uh, question here. We have what's up, Victor. Hey, Raphael, how you doing? Um, yeah. So the uh, first question was the flooring. So someone asked me like, what type of flooring do you typically do? And I'm actually going to share my screen here. So I do what's called like an LVP flooring. So if you just go to homedepot.com. Um, just like an LVP flooring. It's L laminate vinyl product, I think is what it's called. LVP flooring. I think it's like plank stuff. It's something like two bucks a dollar, or two bucks a square foot for the planks. Uh, something like this. This is what I typically use for the flooring, and uh, I've how I've done it in the past. This like kind of nice modern. Typically, like a light gray is good. Uh, I think Life Proof is a really good brand, but roughly like two bucks a, a square foot um, is typically what I pay. It doesn't say how much how much it is here. One seventy nine a square foot. There we go. Boom. It's got these different colors. I honestly like. I really like the light gray. Um, that looks really good in my opinion. Something like this looks super modern. That's what people like nowadays. Uh, let me show one of my one of my flips here. I'm trying to think of a flip where we did. Here we go. So we did this flip recently, and you can kind of see it. So obviously we stage it too. Uh, so we made it look nice. So kind of that like gray, light gray flooring is how we typically do it. Um, what we've been doing recently, like people want it to be all throughout the house as much as possible. Um, but at the same time, like if you want to save some money, you can put carpet in the in the bedrooms. So, so we just did carpet in the bedrooms. Um, just with how the market is and how hot the market is, like, um, you know, it's, it's still selling anyways. I know people prefer like a nice hard surface all throughout because it's easier to clean. It lasts longer. It looks better. It's kind of this, this new, new style. Um, but we honestly haven't seen any difference like carpet in the bedroom versus... Um, LVP all throughout and not affecting sellability. Like the property still sell super quick just because of how hot the market is. Um, and that in mind, you know, we can save like a, probably a thousand bucks on a house like this, just doing carpet in the bedroom. Um, so that's why we do it that way. Um, so that's that. So that's the type of like a flooring that we typically do. So hopefully that's helpful. LVP and then flooring in the, in the bedrooms here. Um, great, so that's, that's that. I also had some questions yesterday from I did a live yesterday, so I want to answer all those questions. Uh, so when do you recommend working with GCs versus subcontractors? So I wanted to answer that. Uh, when do you recommend working with them? Um, it's it's going to depend, and I think I answered this last time, but I want to make sure I go thorough with it. 
Um, it's really like cost and time. The cost, you have to balance out like time and money. So if you hire a general contractor, uh, that's great. They're going to take care of everything A to Z. Um, that's, that's great. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but it's going to cost you more money. But it is going to save you time where they'll take care of everything uh, versus like if you hire subcontractors, if you hire a painter, do the painting, flooring, got to do the flooring, you know, roofer, do the roofing. Like you have to be more involved in the management, um, but you're going to save money. So the question is like, do you have other activities that are higher revenue generating? Um, like if you can be out there sourcing deals, I actually figured out when I was, when I'm out there sourcing deals, I'm something like 200 bucks an hour, like cold calling, um, you know, talking to people, negotiating with people at something like 200 bucks an hour, uh, just because of the spread is so large on these flips. So if you can make 30 K on a flip and it takes you, let's say 30 hours to find a deal, well, that's still a thousand dollars an hour if you want to think of it that way. So maybe it makes sense for you to focus on that a thousand dollar an hour activity versus, um, probably like a uh, general contractor, roughly like 50 bucks an hour, 50 to hundred bucks an hour is how they typically get compensated. Like a good general contractor can make six figures. So that's how I like to think about it. So like, do you have a higher revenue generating activity to start out with? Uh, I also recommend for beginners, like when you're doing this sort of same thing, like I would recommend you being the project manager to start out with, or you being boots on the ground, you helping out as much as possible. Are you like, you manage the project just because like, if you don't know how to do it yourself, it's really hard to pass it off to someone because then you don't know if they're doing a good job. Um, like, let's say with the cold calling example, like if you just hire someone to do cold calling for you, let's say they get a lead, lead every hour of cold calling. Like, okay, is that good? Is that normal? Um, uh, do they need improvements without you doing it? Like you actually don't know um, if they're doing a good job. So that's why I recommend like you, you start at first, uh, get to some level of mastery, and then you can pass it off to someone else. And then you can train them to be as good as you. Um, and then you can continue to build and scale that way. So hopefully that's helpful. That was a rabbit hole question for sure. But uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, you only work with licensed guys. It just depends. Uh, it, the question is like, do I only work with licensed people? It just depends. Like if someone's mowing the lawn, like I don't think they have to be licensed. If they're doing a roof, they definitely have to be licensed. Or if someone's like fixing a sink and leak, leaky sink, uh, I guess that's more of a plumbing thing. So they probably have to be licensed, but it just depends on the work, you know? Um, so it just depends like if they're licensed. I'm not overly strict about it. Like, oh, if you don't have a license, I don't want to deal with you. So there we go. So someone's asking, the GC is not the same as a project manager. Um, it is not. Uh, a general contractor is more like someone who's licensed, insured. Um, they've probably taken classes or something like that, done training to be a general contractor. They can pull permits, that sort of thing. That's kind of like a step above. A project manager, how I have it set up, is more like someone who like still, they still handle the project, but they're more, I don't want to say less trained, like they're still trained. Um, but they're less licensed, I guess. Like they, to, to hire a painter, you don't need a license. Um, it's a kind of a, I want to say lower tier. I'm trying to word it the right way. It's like a, I don't want to say like unlicensed kind of. So it's more of someone who you hire to do work, but general contractor is someone who's more experienced, I'd say. I don't know if I'm explaining that properly. So it's different. It's different. They get paid differently too. Like a general contractor is going to get paid more, um, but they have the experience. Maybe they have, you know, five, 10, 20 years in the, um, and they can pull permits and they can do all that stuff. So it's a little bit different. Uh, when you hire a manager who gets the subs, um, the manager or the project manager will get the subs. Uh, cost of a GC versus a project manager. So how I've set up my project manager, um, I've tried a lot of different ways. I tried like an hourly method. This is more, I'm talking like contracting repairs, renovation here. Um, I typically just do like a flat fee. It depends on the project, but it's about 2000 just to manage it end to end. It's a thousand up front and a thousand when the property sells. Um, and that person can deal with all, you know, all of the, the headaches and the hiring and the managing and, you know, paying people. Um, so that's worth it for a general contractor. It typically depends. I've heard anywhere from, you know, there's, there's different models for it. Like there's a flat fee model for the general contractor. There's cost plus there's, you know, um, just a you know, straight, you know, straight budget is how I've seen it before. So it just, it just depends there. So um, 
but typically like a general contractor gets paid more just because there's more like red tape and probably like, you know, licenses and experience and that sort of thing. So it's typically more than 2000. Okay. Okay, folks. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop it down below. I think I saw some questions. Uh, what type of contract do you use for contractors? Um, I typically just have them like write up a quote is how I do it. They, they can write up a quote, super simple, like a page, like, hey, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and it's going to cost this much. And then you just sign it and that's it. I have my own document. I just like to keep things simple. Like if you hand someone like a 20 page legal document that that's probably not going to be a good fit. It's not going to work out. Um, they're probably not going to be, you know, they'll all have to go talk to my lawyer and then they'll never get back to you. So keeping it something simple, um, you basically want to figure out a couple things. So it's like, um, you know, how much is it going to cost? What are they going to do? And like, what's their time frame to completion? That's another good like management uh, skill here. You start to build as you like flip houses and you manage renovations. Like what's the time frame? Um, like, is it going to take you a week? It's going to take you two weeks. You're going to ask these questions because managing that time frame is key. Like there's some houses where I have, I have hard money on it and it's like 2000 a month hard money. So I have to have, you know, I have to have and make decisions based on that. So, um, you know, every week, if it's 2000, every week's 500 bucks. So a delay in a week is 500 bucks. And that's, you know, coming out of my pocket in terms of profit, in terms of bottom, bottom line there. Um, so that's, that's how I look at it there. Steve, um, thank you so much for joining. Nice sign you have there. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, six figure house flipper, six figure house flipper. It's a little bright. I guess I can turn it down. That's a little bright. And I got my neon LED lights there too. Appreciate it, Steve. Thanks for joining. We have Joe. Is there any good advice on finding a property that requires very little repair, getting under contract and flipping within 30 day contract period? Any good advice on finding a contract that requires very little repair, getting under contract and flip within 30 day contract period. Um, I don't understand the last part of that 30 day contract period. I would say like, how do you find a property that needs very little? Um, like they need something cosmetic. So I would start, okay, so this is a good discussion here, like how to source deals. Um, so let's talk about like on market, let's talk about auction, let's talk about off market and then I'll dive deeper from there. So on market is like MLS, Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia. There's like a realtor involved. Everyone sees those deals. I, to give you any context, like last year I did about 20 flips, which is great. Only one came from MLS. The rest I sourced off market. Uh, just because anything you find on market is just over, you know, it's overpriced. Um, like it's really competitive. It's a good deal. There's going to be a lot of people jumping on it and that's going to bid the price up. So, you know, just my two cents on that. Um, yeah, just my two cents on that. That's how, I, that's how I typically look at it. So that's what you need to look at. If you want to find a cosmetic flip, um, it just, it's going to be hard to, you know, it's going to be hard to do that just by looking at the, looking at MLS auction. I've never actually done an auction deal, um, but I've heard it's the same thing. It's competitive. You know, everyone's there. It's pretty public. So it's not like it's a secret. Um, so a lot of people go there, they have money. That's the other downside for an auction. Like I was told you always, you have to have your money like ready in the bank, ready to go to pull the trigger on a deal. So again, not, not so great there. Uh, final option is that uh, off market. That's where I get the bulk of my properties. That's dealing directly with a seller, uh, you know, going face to face with them. Uh, no realtor involved. You're just dealing with them directly. So that's typically your best bet. Uh, so first is go off market. The second thing is it's the repairs are important. Don't get me wrong, but it's also like the motivation. Like, why are they selling? If someone is like, oh, I don't have to sell the property. Um, you know, the place is in good shape, you know, they can like, oh, I can list it. I, I can wait. You know, I don't have to sell it right now. They're less motivated than someone who has to sell right now. And motivation can come in a lot of ways. That's like divorce. Uh, maybe they're late on their taxes, um, code violation, foreclosure. Um, there's a lot of like lists and lots of like types of motivation. So there's been properties where we didn't do much with it. Maybe we put five, 10, 15,000 into it. Maybe paint flooring, called it good, listed it. 
and we made, you know, profits, 20, 30, 40 K. And the biggest thing was like the seller was motivated. Like they were like, okay, we just need to, you know, I, I want to get rid of this place. It's a hassle. It's a burden. Um, so that's the thing to look for is that like that motivation, that motivation. And sometimes people just ask, that's, that's the first thing people always sometimes ask just like um, for a reasonable price. And if you can do a reasonable price, cause they don't want to go through the hassle of a realtor or any of that stuff. So, um, you know, that's, that's how I think about that. Uh, he might be talking about wholetailing is what Steve says. Uh, what he's saying, some real estate deals are locked in and no longer available to anyone else during 30 days. I guess I'm not clear still. Uh, he might be talking about wholetailing. Yeah, so wholetailing, um, just to get everyone on the same page, is like, instead of doing like a full flip, like a full renovation in terms of like HGTV style, I don't know if you guys watch those TV shows, but it's kind of it's kind of crummy. It's kind of crummy before. And then afterwards, like um, it looks beautiful, amazing. Like anything they can change, like they change and like it looks amazing. So that's like a full rehab, full renovation. Whole tail is a little more uh, like you go lighter on the rehab. So maybe you do paint, maybe you do flooring, but you just fix it up nice. Um, you make it livable and then you list it. And you're not going to list it for tip top price because you didn't do a you know, tip top renovation. Uh, but you just list it and it's like a quicker, it's a quicker process. Um, so that's, you know, that's a great model for a lot of beginners as well. So that's, that's totally fine as well. Is the properties, this is from Steve again. Thanks so much, Steve. Is the properties you get to flip come from what type of distressed property or motivated seller? I've gotten deals from all types of people. I've gotten divorce. I've gotten uh, tax delinquency. I've gotten absentee owner where like they're out of state or out of like the city. I've gotten those. I've gotten... I've gotten foreclosure, I've gotten probate. Probate is like where someone inherits a property. So I've gotten probate deals before. Uh, what else have I gotten? I'm trying to think of other, other examples here. I've gotten like inherited, which I just talked about. <laughs> uh, but there's like a, a ton of different types of deals here. Um, so it just, it just kind of depends, you know, just kind of depends. But there's all types of like motivation. Let me think of, let me pull up my portfolio here. I should actually go through the list. Thanks for the question, Steve, by the way. Appreciate it. If anybody else has questions, drop it now and I can make sure to answer it. Hey, Jay, Jay Craig, how are you doing? Joe says, thank you. I appreciate that. So this one was like the, and this is my portfolio. If you want to check it out here, victoryercheck.com slash portfolio. This is a property here in Alachua. Um, this was like the it was kind of like inherited, but then the, the seller moved to a facility, like an assisted living facility, because she was older, and then basically wanted to sell it. So I don't know how I'd you know, classify that in terms of motivation. This Newberry one, they were it was vacant and it was out of state owner. Uh, and it was a probate as well, so it's an inherited property. This was, this one was interesting. So um, this one, they actually weren't, uh, they weren't like that motivated. Uh, it was a husband and wife and they, you know, one wanted to move back to, back to, to her family and the other one was a little more neutral. And that was basically the motivation. Um, so it doesn't always have to be like a crazy motivation. Um, and they didn't want to, they didn't have money for repairs. Like, so it needed a new roof, it needed like new paint and flooring. And they didn't have money for that because um, it's expensive. We pay like 10 grand for this roof, eight grand for this roof. Uh, that's a lot of money out of pocket. So, you know, they just sold it as is. Okay, boom, boom, got it done. Um, but it doesn't always have to be over the top motivation where it's like, oh my God, I'm going to lose this house tomorrow if I don't sell it. Um, you know, just being a, a real solution for people is really valuable. This deal uh, was a property, like the guy was moving to a care facility. He was just, just wanted to sell it for what he owed on it. This property, 1964, this was a divorce. There was a divorce, the couple split up. Uh, they didn't want to deal with the repairs. They just sold the place. This one was moving out. This is an older couple. They were moving out, um, move, leaving the country. There's like, I just, you know, we just want to sell it as is. This one was a wreck. Nothing against them, but it just needed a lot of work. This one was, I think, absentee owner and it was vacant. So like this owner was two hours away and they just didn't want to deal. The place was a wreck. I can show you guys before pictures for sure. <laughs> Uh, this one was, this one was a owner who just didn't want to deal with the property. She was, she lived in town, but she didn't want to deal with it. And I think she had a tenant in there. The tenant was still paying and she was good. You know, she just didn't want to deal with it. She was too, too busy with her corporate job and just wanted to move on. 
So I can go through the list. I've, I've done a lot of flips, but <laughs> so that's hopefully that's helpful for you guys to understand. Like sometimes the motivation isn't, uh, I know some of the, the other gurus out there, so to speak, like they, <clears throat> they always teach like, oh, like typically more motivation is good, but it's not always like over the top motivation. Sometimes they might even tell you, this is, you got to look at their actions and not what they're telling you when you deal with sellers. Sometimes they'll tell you like, oh, I don't need to sell this place. But then you look at like, oh, they're late on their taxes and they're going through a foreclosure and all this stuff. Like, oh, you actually do need to sell this place, buddy. <laughs> you, you don't tell that to them, but um, some people don't aren't uh, as well kept on their situation, I guess. But like there's motivation there. Like they don't want to go the traditional route. They just want to deal with someone who can buy in cash. Uh, your portfolio looks great. Thank you so much. Houses in your portfolio look amazing. Thank you. Uh, which do you prefer? What type of motivated seller do you work, prefer working with? Ooh, interesting. Uh, I don't know if I have a specific preference. I appreciate the question. I don't think I have a preference. Um, I guess I don't have a preference. It just, it just doesn't really matter to me, you know, as long as they're willing to give me good numbers. You know, whoever gives me the best numbers, honestly. <laughs> so that's how I look at it that way. I appreciate the question, though. Do you prefer to look for handyman specials or what you can find? Um, this kind of goes back to the other question, like handyman specials. Those are typically like on market MLS deals. Uh, there's nothing wrong with those, but uh, they're typically like priced out. Like as soon as a good or decent deal hits the market, it's, it's either sold immediately or the price gets bid up and it's no longer economically feasible. Like you'll lose money or make very little money. Uh, so I typically don't do like a lot of MLS handyman special deals. Portfolio looks great. Thank you so much. Well, very cool, guys. Any other questions, feel free to drop it down below. I am here to answer it. Uh, I've got a couple more minutes here, then I'm going to have to leave here, kind of, you know, bounce here. But um, hopefully this was valuable. Just um, did this last week. I want to do this every week just to answer any questions. Uh, I kind of like this format. Let me know what you guys think. Like typically Wednesdays, like do a topic like yesterday. Uh, make sure you guys watch the the live where I talked about how to get the best contractors for the best price. And I give you like free tips on that. Um, and then like today I do just do open Q and A session, any questions, you know, I'm here to help. Uh, but we can, like, let's see, I don't see any other questions. Oh, here we go, Steve. I'll do Steve's question and I'll, I'll end it. Have you ever done an abandoned house? I have, I've done those vacant houses before. Um, yeah, same. Same basics. I would say if a house is vacant more than a couple years, just make sure to double check the plumbing. Just because if it's vacant so long and like the, the water sitting in the pipes for so long, you might have to do a repipe. So I made that mistake on a flip a while back where like we did the budget and it's like it's been vacant for five years. Like, oh, okay, we don't have to worry about the plumbing. It's probably good. We had to repipe it and that was about five grand, six grand. Uh, so we got it done. We still made a profit on that one. I think we made like 25,000 on that one. So it's still a good deal. Like I wouldn't turn that money down. Um, but yeah, no, so just, just keep that in mind. So I've done abandoned houses and that sort of thing. The other thing with abandoned, you just want to make sure it's like structurally sound. You don't want it to be what's called a tear down where it's better just to, you know, rip down the, the foundation, you know, knock down the house and try again, try and build a new one. I have done abandoned though. Vacant, vacant houses are good too. I like those. Because uh, motivation, if the house is just sitting there, it's costing people money in terms of property insurance, property tax. Uh, maybe they have a mortgage on it. So sitting, you know, that's that's a car, you know, source of motivation too. Places, you know, costing you a grand a month, like you got to do something with that place. That's gonna burn a hole in your pocket. Uh, great. So that's that's that. That's the updates there. Um, again, my name is Victor. So I'm a full-time real estate investor, fix and flipper here. Uh, what I also do, I also mentor people nationwide. So if you guys are interested, shoot me a PM like, hey, I, you know, I'd love to uh, be mentored by you. Um, a great track record, help people get their first deal, get them to six figures eventually. So if you can, if you want to do full-time real estate, you know, I'm, I'm here to help you. The same journey I made. Uh, I teach you how to find deals, how to run the numbers, how to hire contractors, how to get the funding, uh, like everything A to Z. I teach you and I kind of mentor you, guide you through that entire process. So if you're interested, shoot me a PM. Uh, on here on Facebook, shoot me a personal message. You know, I'm, I'm here to help. Um, we can just, you know, 
explore if it's a good fit. If it's a good fit, great. If it's not a good fit, no hard feelings, but it makes sense at least to have that conversation. So if you ever feel like you're stuck and maybe like you don't know what to do next, or uh, you're trying to get started, but you've been trying to get started for a year or maybe longer, uh, but you're just kind of stuck, you know, I'm, I'm here to help. I can help you get unstuck, get you deals, get you, you know, started. So shoot me a PM if you're interested and we'll take it from there. But um, thank you so much, guys. Um, thank you. And um, hope you have a nice rest of your day.